Welcome into Hitting Hard with John Chuck. We're here on Locked On Sports Atlanta. Today on the show, this is more of why you need cap space. I'll explain that. Plus, it's not too early for a change, is it? And maybe could have been second team, not third team. We got a lot to discuss. It's Hitting Hard with John Chuck. we on Locked On Sports Atlanta. This is Hitting Hard with John Chuckery, part of Locked On Sports Atlanta. And it starts now. Welcome into a Wednesday edition of Hitting Hard with John Chuck. We're here on Locked On Sports Atlanta. We ask you to head over to YouTube.com, put Locked On Sports Atlanta into your browser, search us out, subscribe to the channel. 1,400 subscribers and growing every day. We really appreciate everybody being a part of our community. Leave us a comment, tell us what you think, uh, and follow me on my personal Twitter page at JMCH316. You know, the Falcons are eating a whole crap ton of cap space this year in dead cap money so they can free up money for next year. And we'll see what they decide to do with Deion Jones, stay, go, whatever like that. Understand all that. But I think people have the wrong impression about cap space and why you have it. Having a bunch of cap space sounds good in theory, but it's not. And usually when you have cap space, it's because, or when you have lots of cap space, it's because either you've got guys that are just outpricing you or you don't have guys that you've drafted very well that are worthy of second contracts. I'm bringing all of this up because yes, the Falcons have a bunch of cap space next year, but the real reason that you want to have that. And Arthur Smith has said this pro football focus went back and regraded the 2018 NFL draft. Okay. So they went back four years. Guys should be in their fifth year. If your first rounder should be in your fifth year option, Fourth rounders are, you know, in their in their final years here. But the Falcons got a B grade. But I want to go over this list of guys that the Falcons took in 2018. First round pick was Calvin Ridley. Second round pick was Isaiah Oliver. Third round pick was Deidre Sanat. Fourth round pick was Ido Smith. Sixth round pick was Russell Gage. Sixth round pick was Foye Oluokun. Now, I bring that up because... The only guy that re-signed, forget the Ridley thing and the suspension. At this point, Ridley's probably a guy that's not going to be here. He comes back next year. I don't think he's even going to be playing out his fifth-year option. But the only guy that they signed to a second-year deal in that group is Isaiah Oliver for a one-year, $1.25 million contract. Now, was Russell Gage or Foyer Aluakin picks that you could have signed? Well, not with your current cap structure. And, and this, is, this is the reason that you want cap space. It's not so you can go out in the free agent market and spend while. When teams do that, you don't get return on value for it. It's to keep your guys at home. It is much easier to keep guys that you drafted in your organization and keep those guys around. Now, look, I understand there are some free agents that just ball out and they're going to go get some big payday from somebody else because you don't want to put that kind of money into it. But you probably could have afforded if you had next year's cap space to give three for 30 to Russell Gage. Would that be overpaying him some? Probably, but that's the free agent market. Could you maybe have worked out a deal for Foyer that if you had the cap space, you could have kept him in Atlanta? Maybe. But that's where the cap space itself becomes much more important. It's not about going out and signing a whole bunch of free agents that come from a... It's it's more about not signing the Dante Fowlers of the world because you have to go get guys and and you have to... Now, look. If you're a Super Bowl-ready team, right, you can go out and dip your toe into free agency and get yourself a guy that's a piece that you think puts you over the top, right? You know, the first real free agent in NFL history was Reggie White, and they felt like they had a Super Bowl-ready team. They had, you know, Brett Favre and all these guys, and they thought they were really good. Let's go get this defensive stall worked, and, you know, we'll change it. And it worked, obviously, right? But by and large, a lot of times when teams dip their toe in uh, – another good example, the Buffalo Bills this year. Right. They went out and got Von Miller. 
they feel like they have everything ready to go win the Super Bowl right now. Not tomorrow, not next week, right now they can win the Super Bowl. Okay, what could we use more of? Kill a quarterback. And, and that's why you go out and get that one piece. But the reason that you want some cap space is to keep those guys at home. And when you have a hundred million dollars of cap space, that sounds great. Oh, you know, next year we'll be able to go into free agency and sign this. Well, a lot of those guys, one, don't, when you have that much cap space, one is you're probably a bad organization that you haven't drafted very well. Think about the draft I just gave you. Your second, third, and fourth round picks only warranted a one-year, $1.25 million deal out of those three guys. The two guys I'm talking about with Gage and Aluk, and those are sixth-round picks. The fact that those guys contributed to your team is surprising in itself. And who knows, in a different situation or time, maybe Ridley would be a guy that would be here long-term or whatever like that, but it's about keeping your guys here. And when you have a hundred some million dollars, you probably have a bad team that didn't draft well. Well, why do top flight free agents want to come to your organization? You know, the, the top guys want to go play for contenders because they'll find money, right? I mean, the good organizations find money. They find a way. Look at what the Saints have done. We're bringing Landry and we're bringing, you know, uh, Honey Badger. and we're doing, you know, They find ways to get money. But guys want to go play for good organizations. That's why the Rams, once they built their core Super Bowl team, they could give away draft picks. We can do this, any other. We bring a piece here. We bring Von Miller here. We make a trade. We do all the because we're ready to win the Super Bowl now. Bad organizations with a lot of cap space don't get top flight guys to want to come to their team. You need to keep the guys that you have in place and make sure that those guys don't get away because the Falcons grade for this draft, by the way, is a B grade. And okay. You can argue debate that, but the fact that you got a very productive guy in round one in a wide receiver in Calvin Ridley, who was a little bit of a surprise, but then you hit for sixth round picks, you kind of hit two home runs in the sixth round. You kind of really hit now your second, third, fourth round, you know, those kind of flamed out and, you know, say what you will about Oliver, but he's not lived up to expectations. And by and large, other than part of last year when he was healthy, he didn't do anything for this franchise. And Sanat was a no show. He was might as well been on a milk carton at that point. And Ito Smith, I mean, okay, was just a guy. But you hit home runs in your sixth round. Those are the kinds of guys that you want to keep around because those guys will look at your organization and say, I don't think it was a matter of Russell Gage wanted to leave the Falcons, but they knew they couldn't pay him or, or he knew that they couldn't pay him. They were probably going to end up, you know, remember when Matt Ryan got traded and Russell Gage went on his Twitter page and he put the big eye emoji and then he put the, the, the guy that taps his head like, you know, hey, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, that kind of thing. Because he knew he made the right decision. And, and I don't know if they would have been, you know, with cap space, would have been able to keep Russell Gage. But there wasn't a necessarily a need for Russell Gage to decide that he wanted to bolt for free agency. So the cap, when we talk about having cap space and we talk about the reasons why you want cap space, it's not about going out into other teams and raiding rosters and bringing guys into your franchise. Cap space is about, I need to keep the guys that I drafted well and put them on second contracts so that I don't have to roll. When I, if I re-sign Gage and Foyer, I know what I'm getting with those two guys because they're in my system. I see them every day. I know what I'm getting. When I roll the dice on, uh, what's his name? Dante Fowler. I'm hoping for something, but I don't know for sure what I'm getting, if he'll be a fit or not. And that's where you get yourself in trouble. You got to sign your own guys first. And Arthur Smith brought that point up specifically. All right, when we get back, third team? Okay, maybe it could have been second team. We'll discuss that next. It is Hitting Hard with John Chuckery on Locked On Sports Atlanta. 